Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bet Right Sports Betting Podcast presented by the Six Pack Coverage Media Network. It's your host, Jeff Rowell, here with my co host, Andrew Tanzi, coming at you again to break down some more NFL futures bets. Today, we are moving on to potentially the greatest division in the history of professional football. And I don't know if that's an exaggeration. Obviously we have a lot of season to play, but the AFC West is shaping up to be one of the all time divisions in football. So that's where we're at today. This is our second uh, breakdown in the AFC. We already covered the whole NFC. So feel free to go back and listen to any of those podcasts if you would like to. Um, and we'll go team by team here, give out our kind of preview on each team, any bets that we have in anything that we're eyeing up and uh, yeah, find some value on the board. Rue, how are we doing? Good man. Very, like you said, very exciting division here. Great quarterbacks, which obviously is what I think makes it the probably the greatest yeah. division ever. You're talking about Justin Herbert as the third best quarterback in this division. So, uh, yeah, pretty exciting to see how this is going to shape up. It definitely makes it harder to bet win total over bets, I think, just because of the how competitive this division will end up being. Yeah, for sure. I think the quarterback play is definitely the best in the league. And like you said, it's it's weird because you see some of these numbers like Mahomes and Andy Reid, 10 and a half. Like that seems yeah. so low. But then you look at the schedule and the other teams in the division, it's so hard to find an over. It's just going to be a bloodbath. You could make a case for any of these teams to win the division. So, yeah. Um. All right. Ready to dive into the Kansas City Chiefs up first. Oh, yeah. All right, so they are the reigning AFC West champs. Their win total in the market right now is 10.5, around minus 110 on both sides to the over and the under, plus 170 to win the division, minus 200 to make the playoffs, and around 10-1 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Um, Off-season moves, they lost Tyreek Hill and Byron Pringle from the receiving core, and then a um, couple offensive linemen, then Teron Matthew and Anthony Hitchens lost on the defense. Um, they did add Juju Smith-Schuster, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, on offense along with Ronald Jones in the backfield also added safety Justin Reed and then a couple defenders in the draft Trent McDuffie quarterback edge rusher George Karloftis and then a wide receiver from Western Michigan Sky Moore so a lot of moving parts here but I think the main staples here obviously Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reed this will be the fifth season of Mahomes and Reed quarterback uh, coach duo so in their four seasons prior 12 and 4 12 and 4 14 and 2 and then 12 and 5 last year went over their win total easily in each of the first three seasons together um, last year it was kind of at 12 or 12 and a half so depending on where you got it they either went pushed or you know half a win under so you know this is kind of what we were talking about off the top it's, it's kind of weird seeing a 10 and a half for a team that's won 12 to 14 games in every year that they've had Reed and Mahomes there. So it's just kind of an interesting thing here with a potentially legendary coach quarterback combo set at 10 and a half, but I think it makes sense in this division. So where are you looking at with the chiefs here? Do you have a play on the over or would this team that you might be fading this year? So it's weird. It's like, if you just watched last season and didn't have the, a record to put to it, you would think the chiefs had a down season because it really wasn't a pretty season from their standards still- for sure. Exactly. And they still won 12 games. So that's just kind of the standard they set as you were looking at last season. Oh, they didn't look great, but they still won 12 games. Yeah. And and same goes with Mahomes. You looked at Mahomes during certain stretches of the season. You're like, you know, there was some stretches where the offense couldn't score 20 points. But now you look at his stats. He finished fifth in QBR. He threw for 4,800 yards, 37 touchdowns. So when you look at that, it's you're like, if you're saying that's a down season from Pat Mahomes and you're, you're sensing some regression back to the mean, the guy's looking at another 40 touchdown season, 5,000 yards. So uh, I, I'm actually weirdly high on the, on the Chiefs, and I didn't really expect to. Interesting. Uh, especially with the loss of Tyree Kill. Now, it didn't translate to an over bet just because of the schedule, even outside of the division. They have some tough matchups, but it's definitely a team that I think if they get off to a little bit of a rougher start, uh, maybe lose a couple of the first two games in that tough start, then maybe I'll be looking on some futures bets or some divisional bets on them. Um, and, and same thing, targeting them on a week-to-week basis. So the one question mark with this Chiefs team that we're always concerned about is the defense. But the last two years, they've been bottom 10 in defense of DVOA, and they still won 14 and 12 games. So I think they've proven that even with a subpar defense, this team can get it done. And on the offensive side, The big loss is Tyree Kill, but I'm not looking at this like a a Devontae Adams situation with the Packers. I actually think they did a great job 
of replacing Tyree Kill with multiple guys. So you have three guys that can stretch the field in Hardman, MVS, and Sky Moore. You have Juju, who's a great possession receiver, close to the line of scrimmage type of guy. And then you still have Kelsey there, who's a do-it-all type of guy, down the field, possession, third down guy. So yep. I, I, I really am not looking at this offense – that like I think they're going to take a step back because of Tyree Kill. If anything, I think they're going to have a, a a better year than last year just because of the depth they now have at wide receiver and the different looks they can present with all these speed guys on the outside. So I'm actually weirdly high on this team, and um, I'll, I'll definitely be looking at them from a week to week basis. But like I said, the schedule is just brutal for them, so it makes it pretty tough to take an over ten and a half. And and even the divisional matchups, I still think they're the best team in the division. But that's not to say they're going to have a winning record in the division. All these games are going to be probably four points or less in spread. Yeah. They could go either way. So um, I'm high on the team, but uh, no no bets on them right now. Yeah, I think I kind of have a similar feel on this one. You just to dive into the schedule a little bit more, like you mentioned, is the hardest schedule in the entire league based on the Vegas win totals right now. Um, one of the only teams with three straight road games, I think later in the season, it's week 13 to 15. They have three straight on the road. And then to start the season, it's just brutal. So they go at Arizona, currently three point favorites, but still going to be a tough game. Then they have Chargers, Colts, Bucks, Raiders, Bills, Niners. So six straight playoff caliber teams to start the year. Obviously it eases up a little bit, but like we said, like these front loaded schedules, this is really tough tough um and the, the chiefs could win all those games like i don't think anybody's saying they can't go six and oh but it's just tough when the schedule sets up like that so i think i'm kind of like you i i like the team i still like the offense i think they're going to do really well but the schedule makes it tough to make a case for the over 10 and a half so it's a pass for me on the uh, win total do you have any like supreme confidence in any of their wide receivers that they brought over that can like really take a big leap this year like do you think we see like another thousand yard season from juju or is it just kind of like they have a lot of bodies you don't know who's going to step up but you feel like there's enough talent that someone will do it or is there someone in particular that you think can have a ton of success with Mahomes? i actually really like juju from a receptions perspective uh his season total was in the 70s i believe 75 oh, i, I want to say around there i really <laughs> like him and i have uh, right now I have my full list of prop spots I'm already looking for week one and his receptions are on there. And I think uh, the start of the season, we might get a conservative line with him just because there is the unknown of who's going to step up. And obviously Kelsey's still there. He's probably going to be the go-to, but I, I really like Juju in that short route. Now it's not say it's going to translate to a ton of yards. Cause like I said, they have these guys for the deep passes and Kelsey's still that guy in the middle of the field. But in terms of a, a, a get rid of the ball quick type of guy, third down guy. I really like Juju. I think he could average like six, six receptions, seven receptions per game in this offense. Yeah, that's a really good point. I like that look a lot. Maybe we get like a four and a half, maybe a five yeah. and a half at plus money on him in week one. I think that's a really good idea. Cause yeah, like you said, they, they don't really need him to be stretching the field. So if him and Kelsey just kind of roam the middle of the field and take the easy targets, then you send MBS and Hardman and Sky more deep and they can get the sort of more volatile targets. So I think that's Espe a really good idea. Yeah, especially if you're getting the same types of defensive looks you were getting last year. Where yeah, you're keep the safeties as high as you can. Exactly. Leave the middle of the field wide open for Juju and Kelsey. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, really like him. And just to go back to the schedule real quick in terms of hopping on the Chiefs maybe after the first four or five weeks or so. So, like you said, they have Arizona Chargers, Indianapolis, Tampa Bay. And then the Chargers have Vegas, obviously the Chiefs, but then they play Jacksonville and Houston. And then the Broncos have Seattle and Houston to start the year. So you have these other teams that the division could get right. off to a three and one or four and zero oh type of start where the chiefs, not to say they can't beat these other teams to go three, one, four, no, oh, but there's a chance they start out like two and two and you get a better price on them to win the division. Yes. Yeah, so maybe we'll see if they can get like a plus two fifty, plus 300 a few weeks into the season, and then take them. Cause I know there was some people out there that did that last year. Cause it was kind of the same scenario and the chiefs ended up winning the division. So. Yeah. And and last season, I kind of look at it as when I was saying that it looked like they had a down year. I really think it was just a product of the offense and defense not really clicking at the same time. It felt like that when the offense was great, the defense wasn't great. They were letting up a ton of points. And then that stretched towards the end of the season. And when they were playing some bad teams, the defense really stepped up, but the offense didn't look great. So it was kind of a grind of a season, but they were able to grind out 12 wins. So um, 
And, and I feel I, like honestly, they just had some like fluky. Like, I don't know if they were fluky, just like weird games. Like they had the one against the Ravens where they set up for the final field goal and the guy misses it, or there was a fumble on one. Tyreek Hill like drops a pass perfectly in his hands and it's intercepted. Like they had some weird, like really game breaking plays that were just like very out of character. It felt like they like could have at least won another two games last year. Yeah, there was. I don't remember what game it was. There was a cu- one or two games where they had interceptions like bouncing off of Tyree kills helmet yes, and all. multiple yeah. times. It was just, so yeah, like it, definitely some fluky things baked in there. Um, so yeah, I, I, I am very high on the chiefs. I like them in week one against the Cardinals at minus three. Like, I feel like early in the season, it still might be some hesitancy and, you know, no Tyree kill. What's this offense going to look like? But like I said, I, if anything, I don't want to say they take a step forward. Obviously I'm not, I don't want to uh, underplay the value of Tyree kill, but I just think when you replace him with, or you have all these other options on the offense. Yeah. You could argue they're better than last year on offense. All right. Sounds like we're both pretty high on the chiefs, but no bet to be made right now. Anything left to say on Kansas city? Nope. All right. Let's move over to the LA chargers. Second up in this division, their win total is sitting at a flat 10, but you do have to pay minus minus one thirty If you want to go over there, plus two forty to win the AFC rest around West around minus 160 to make the playoffs. A um, lot of offseason moves here. They did lose cornerback Chris Harris, offensive tackle Brian Bulaga, and your boy Jared, primetime cook, unfortunately no longer on the team. Um, they did add Gerald Everett to replace Jared Cook, and then they got a bunch of uh, big upgrades on defense, linebacker Kyle Vannoy, defensive end Khalil Mack from the Bears, and then Patriots cornerback J.C. Jackson with a big year last year so. I think there's a lot to like on this team, especially from a talent perspective. Obviously you have one of the most explosive passing offenses in the league with Herbert and all of his weapons, dynamic weapons. The defensive line should be really good with Joey Bosa. The secondary has tons of skill on it. Um, The problem is that this team has had a lot of hype coming into the last season and they kind of underperformed in a big way. I mean, they had a chance to make the playoffs and they let down big time in the final week against the Raiders gave away a few games down the stretch. So where are you at here? I know you're not a a big buy the hype guy. Are you buying it here? Is this a team that you think we should fade because they're getting pumped up a little bit too much prematurely? So question for you, what were your thoughts when like the odds came out? Did you, and it's only by a slight margin, but were you a little surprised the chargers were in front of the Broncos with, with Russell Wilson or is it kind of where you expected? Um, I'm, I don't know if I would make them in front of the Broncos. Like I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but I kind of like the Broncos a lot this year. Um, I guess I wasn't surprised because I feel like I just hear so much hype on the chargers that I'm not surprised people really like yeah. them, but I don't know if they necessarily deserve to be this close to the chiefs or this much further in front of the Broncos. Yeah. So, so like you said, a prolific offense, 27.9 points per game last year, 390 yards per game, both top five in the league. To me, there's two things. Can Brandon Saley put his ego aside and, and just coach a normal football game? Cause the, the fourth Wouldn't downs, count on it. <laughs> the fourth downs. I mean, the two games that come to mind that down the stretch of the season, it was the Chiefs game and the Raiders game where there was multiple decisions to go for it on fourth down, either giving away points or handing the other team points. And it's a thing where it looks great when you get them and, and it doesn't when you don't get them. But there's just certain circumstances where, dude, just punt the ball or just kick the field goal. I mean, it, it, you don't have to flex on every fourth down and be like, I'm going for it no matter what. what. What are you trying to prove? I mean, at some point, it's just stupidity. And I know we talked about it numerous times last year. They got off to a hot start getting on these all these fourth downs and stuff. But towards the end of the season, it was just getting absolutely ridiculous. And then the other question is, can the defense do a 180? Because this defense was bad last year. And I know they brought in some great pieces. Really just can they stop the run? Like they weren't they weren't great against a pass, but yeah, they, they were terrible. But I mean they're literally giving up like eight yards a carry. Like you just run the ball and get a first down every time. Yeah, the infamous Rex Burkhead game that is embedded in my mind where he rushed <laughs> for can't believe that game. <laughs> I believe I called it the worst defensive performance in NFL history. And they lost to the Texans. Yeah. No, it's, I don't care if they lost to the Texans. I care that Rex Burke had lost for a hundred yards. The guy I mean, they that still we were lost be- the game though. I, I believe going into it, I said I would bet his under like one and a half rush yards if they just <laughs> posted the line. But yeah, and 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 look, there was some other head scratching losses on on last year's schedule. They lost thirty four to six to Baltimore. They lost twenty eight to thirteen to Denver, and then yeah, the forty one twenty nine loss to Houston. So. Um, 
they brought in JC Jackson, Khalil Mack, two big ads. And, and with the way the offense is, you really just, and it kind of goes for a lot of these teams in the division. You really just need to get a middle of the pack defense. And I think you can be a great team now uh, within the division. You might, you know, you got to get in that top 12 ish range to kind of separate from the pack because I don't think the chargers are going to have as good of an offense as the Chiefs. So maybe you make up for it if you have a little bit of a better defense and they definitely they could, yeah, maybe, maybe they, they, yeah, arguably they could, but I think defensively the chargers have better personnel. So yeah. if they can, they can put it together. Um, there, there's no reason. And I'm, I'm just not taking because I don't fully trust the defense yet just because of a few rosters. And I don't trust Brandon Staley because if you're in this division where it's going to be so tight, if you're making a couple boneheaded mistakes, even in one game that you drop because of a dumb coaching decision or something, that's a huge deal. So maybe at the end of the season, this team ends up winning the division. I'll be kicking myself because I am a big Justin Herbert fan. I can say, dude, look at this roster. They're so talented. What were you thinking? But, uh, right now, uh, I don't want to lay the juice for, for them to get 11 wins. That's, that's, that to me is a lot to ask. It's still a young quarterback. I know it's kind of like the Josh Allen thing. Like, yeah, he had a breakout season last year. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Let's see some consistency. Uh, They didn't even make the playoffs last year. So it's not like Herbert had this huge run and took them to the playoffs. Um, So pump the brakes. I still think Herbert's great, but let's, let's see it for consecutive seasons. Yeah, I think the two fi- two things for me is kind of like you just said, the expectations and the the bar that's being set here for a team that hasn't really accomplished anything. It really feels like the Eagles and the Chargers are two of the most hyped teams this offseason. And, I mean, at least the Eagles made the playoffs last year. Like, I know they both won nine games, but at least the Eagles made the playoffs. The Chargers are kind of getting all this hype. You have to win 11 games to hit the over, and, like, they didn't really accomplish anything last year. So, I think that – and I just still have concerns on the defense. Like, there's a just a decent chance in my mind that Ronaldo Hill, their defensive coordinator, might just flat out stink um like i think the roster was pretty good last season they still had joey bosa kenneth murray asante samuel and derwin james in the secondary and they ranked 24th in epa per play on defense and 31st against the run so great they have all this talent but like if their defensive coordinator sucks and their head coach is all offense like they might just not be a great defense because they don't have a great scheme because they're letting everyone run so many, so much up the middle that they, just, you know, they're so worried about stopping the pass and it's just clearly not working. So I think that's my issue. I do think I'm not going to bet the under here just because I could see this team having a ton of success in the regular season. Um, like I wouldn't be surprised if they won 10 or 11 games. I'm kind of hoping they do so that they can host the playoff game and then we can like really drop the hammer and fade them. Cause if we got, the Patriots, the Chiefs, or the Bengals, a team like that as a dog against this team in the playoffs, like I would be all over that. I, I could not wait to fade this team in the playoffs. So that's kind of my hope. Not really going to touch them in the regular season. Could see a big regular season, and then we fade them hard in the playoffs. You still you could fade them on a week to week basis. We like, we can definitely look at our spots. It's just hard to know if I'm going to be able to do that now because I don't know what the lines are going to be. But yeah. Yeah, plus four against the Raiders, and or sorry, they're minus four against the Raiders in week one. I kind of yeah, like the, the Raiders. Raiders there. Definitely going to bet the Raiders. Um, they're plus three in Kansas City week two. So, yeah, yeah I mean, who, who knows? The Chargers blow out the Raiders, and you get maybe a possible line under a field goal. So, I, yeah, so there's potential to fade the hype early in the season. Now, unfortunately, after the first two weeks, they get Jacksonville and Houston, so we'll see where those spreads are at. But uh, there's definitely opportunity there. And, and if, if they come out and you see – Vegas and Kansas City running right through the teeth of the defense and nothing's changed, then it's definitely going to be a little bit concerning. And you may have a spot where week five, you could possibly take Cleveland and with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. So, um, yeah, I think there's going to be opportunities here based on what we see to start the season. Yeah. All right. Anyone left to say on the Chargers? Nope. All right. Let's go over to the Mile High City and the Denver Broncos. Their win total is either nine and a half or ten, depending on where you're looking. The juice is a little bit different based on what number you have. Plus 275 to win the AFC West, minus 140 to make the playoffs. Uh, Vic Fangio is out at head coach. Nathaniel Hackett, former Packers offensive coordinator, comes in to replace him. Uh, obviously the big offseason acquisition quarterback Russell Wilson from the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks. They also got uh, right tackle Billy Turner, defensive end Randy Gregory from the Cowboys, and then the Eagles leading tackler Alex Singleton at linebacker. 
Um, couple players that they lost, obviously Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater probably won't be needing them. Tight end Noah Fan, and then a couple cornerbacks, Bryce Callahan, Kyle Fuller, and then they lost defensive end Von Miller during the middle of the year last year. And then one injury note, we did just find out that Tim Patrick tore his ACL in practice maybe a week ago, so he's going to be out for the season, but still a pretty decently deep uh, receiving core. So where are you at here on the Broncos? Do you like Russ in uh, Denver in his new look offense, or is this a team that it's, uh, you know, in for some trouble. Where do you see them? So I think it's a dangerous team. And it, 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 it's kind of a team I look at that they were just missing that quarterback. They have great weapons, like you said, a deep receiving core. They got two good running backs. Uh, maybe not an elite defense, but I, I, I kind of like them as a potential to be the best division in the league. I think they have two solid cornerbacks. They added great grand- defense in the league. Uh, division. Did I say league. I meant division. Oh, best defense the in the division. Defense I think within said the best division. Defense. I think you said best division in the league. I don't know. Yeah, yeah sorry. Best defense in the division. Okay, got it. With two solid corners on the outside, like you said, brought in Randy Gregory to rush the passer. So, um, so they have good pieces on defense, and it's a situation where Russell Wilson, as great as he was in Seattle, there was always this cloud there that they're holding him back because they were this run first offense that. You know, when they turned Russ loose, it's like yeah, this this dude's a top five quarterback. But then it's like, no, we want to run the ball. Uh, reel, reel him back in. He's getting too loose. We're yeah, winning exactly. too many games. It's like, exactly. <laughs> like, so with, with Nathaniel Hackett coming in, I know he's a first time head coach, but pair him who has been with Aaron Rodgers, uh, the a veteran quarterback in Russell Wilson. I think this offense can be great. Um, my one concern is the offensive line. So they're as bad as. Russell Wilson's offensive line was in Seattle last year. Denver actually allowed a higher pressure rate and allowed more quarterbacks quarterback hits last season. So, you know, maybe that changes. They need some young guys to step you up. You also so. have to factor in who's behind center. Like, it's a little bit – like, I think the stats could be a little bit skewed if you have Drew Locke holding the ball back there who has no idea what he's doing. Like, he's going to take more hits than a guy yeah, that knows how to get rid of it quick. But, yeah, I mean, the offensive line's not great. I see them projected around, like, the middle of the pack, maybe slightly yeah. worse than that from what I'm seeing. Yeah, so I, despite the stats, I think it's still an upgrade from Seattle. I mean, Seattle's line has been bad for how you know the last few years. So um, I, I think it's kind of like a similar team to the Chargers, where you, you could have this great offense and you really just need this defense to be a middle of the pack, maybe top fifteen type of defense, and you can have a great team. And like I said, I kind of lean them over the Chargers just because I. I as great as Herbert was last year, Russell Wilson's still a better quarterback. I think that they're somewhat, you know, similar good personnel on defense with some potential, good weapons on offense. Um, so again, no, no bets for me here. It's just I, I found a nine and a half, but it was juiced to like minus one forty five. And 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 the the matchups with the Chargers, they could very well be coin flip games. They could split the game. Same thing with the Raiders, Chiefs. So there's it's just there's so much volatility within these divisional matchups. It's just so hard to predict these win totals and who's going to win the division. All right, sounds like a pretty bullish case on the Broncos. So no bets for you. Nah, no bets. Well, I, I give right. one bet, but I'll come back to it. you. Can give your uh, spiel. All right, I have two bets here in my spiel. We're not going with the win total. We're not going with the division. I think the ceiling for this team is infinity. Give me the Denver Broncos at 17 to one to win the Super Bowl. The only team that I have bet to win the Super Bowl that's actually still has current odds because I bet the Bucks before it changed. But I think this is the year that Russell Wilson finally gets unleashed. This is a quarterback that threw for 40 touchdowns and only 13 interceptions in his last year that he was fully healthy. What if I told you that he did all of that with Pete Carroll, like we said, actively sabotaging him in every game? I think that people think Russell Wilson is like a really good quarterback. What if he's actually incredible? What if we don't even know how good he is because he's been held in this 1940s offense in Seattle and constantly held back? I think they have the roster. They have talent on offense. I think Sutton and Judy are awesome weapons on the outside. KJ Hamler gives them some speed. Javante Williams, I think they're going to give him more carries than Melvin this year. He's an awesome running back. We love the defense. And then Nathaniel Hackett, yes, he's a big unknown. This is a guy that's worked with Aaron Rodgers for multiple years. Vic Fangio was another terrible head coach so I firmly believe that Hack is an upgrade over him coming in here and 
look, we've seen precedence with this over the last few years. It's kind of been like a weird scenario, but Stafford goes to the Rams last year. What happens? Oh, they win the Super Bowl. What happens the year before that? Brady goes to the Bucs. They win the Super Bowl. This year, the big quarterback acquisition was Russell Wilson. Maybe the Broncos are going to go and win the Super Bowl. So I don't think it's crazy. I think this team can accomplish anything you want them to this year. And I'm also going to go with Russell Wilson. Sorry, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say that's like a great comparison because you look at the Rams and you look at the Bucks. It was kind of the like, same thing. They had the roster. The the guys are there. You're just yes. missing that quarterback. Um, it, go ahead with your Russell Wilson MVP bet because that was my one bet too. Russell Wilson <laughs> to win MVP at 17 to 1. We know the narrative has been there for years. Like I said, last season fully healthy, 4,200 yards and 40 touchdowns in only 16 games. So, and and look, you bring in Nathaniel Hackett, like, yes, he was the offensive coordinator, wasn't the head coach, but like, guess who he just coached? The guy that won back to back MVPs and Aaron Rodgers. So, if there's anyone that knows how to design an offense and help orchestrate something that could win an MVP, it's Nathaniel Hackett. So, I love that pairing of coach quarterback combo i think this is the year that russell wilson gets it done and the fact that you already have that narrative like yes he still needs to put up the stats but i think if it's close between him and a guy like herbert who's kind of up and coming i think they would give it to russell wilson just because of this narrative of he's been so good but he's never really been in the mvp conversation he's never gotten the vote so give me all of that give me all of the broncos ceiling outcomes this year so I'll add a couple things to that because I also that was my one bet is Russell Love it. And MVP. Love it. I, I know we didn't even talk about that. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, starting with him being held back in Seattle and all that, like he has potential for better years than we've yeah. seen. But add on to that that the Broncos say they come out and win this division. I mean, the quarterback who wins this division is going to have a, a damn has good to be case. a front runner for MVP. Exactly. Like, yeah. And he's priced behind Mahomes. He's priced behind Herbert. So, you know, you can make if you like the Raiders, I think you take a piece of Derek Carr because it's the same situation. But uh, on top of that, you take a team that has won 12 combined games over the last two seasons. If they win this division, you're then winning the, like you said, possibly the toughest division ever in football and a legit Super Bowl contender with the only one change on the team really being Russell Wilson. Well, obviously a new coach and stuff, but roster wise, it's like, you know, the same core and pieces are there. You're just bringing in Russell Wilson. So add on those two factors. And I think some of the guys Wilson's price around and price behind, I think the value is great on him for MVP. Yeah. And I think, like you said, it's kind of, it's going to, Russell Wilson's going to get all the credit if this goes well. Like, yeah, people yeah. say Nathaniel Hackett did a good job, but like, I could see, I don't know if the Chargers have a big year, like, yes, Herbert will get credit, but like, I think people will also be talking about how amazing Staley is and how in love they are with his fourth down decisions. Like if the Broncos win 11 games, I think it's going to be a hundred percent because of Russell Wilson, because of like you just said, this has been a bad team for the last few years, even though we think the roster is good. What changed? It was Russell Wilson. So yeah. Love, love that. Yeah, I'm glad we're both on that. It's pretty awesome. I didn't know if you were going to be in on the Broncos or not. It was kind of like the more I dug into them, I was like, I think I really want to put the stamp down on this team. This is this is my team. All, All right. right. Ready to go on to the Vegas Raiders? Broncos, uh, Vikings, Super Bowl. I can see it now. <laughs> <laughs> Every week. We're not, we're not doing it. <laughs> All right, what would you price the Super Bowl if it was Broncos? Yeah, dude, Vikings? what is it? What is the look ahead line on Vikings? Broncos? Broncos minus three, and I'm betting the Broncos. <laughs> All right, the Raiders round out our AFC West division here. Their win total is at eight and a half, plus 700 to win this division and plus 180 to make the playoffs. Um, Josh McDaniels is going to be the new head coach here in Vegas. Uh, first time coaching since he was on the uh, division rival Denver Broncos in ba- back in 2010. Shout out to Tim Tebow. Uh, offseason acquisitions, Devontae Adams, the big one, then defensive end Chandler, Chandler Jones and quarterback Rock Yassin from the Colts. They did lose Yannick Ngakwe, Casey Hayward, and Corey Littleton off in the defense, and they lost Brian Edwards and Zay Jones some depth at wide receiver. Nothing really notable in the draft. They took a Georgia running back, Samir White, in the fourth round, so we'll kind of see how that split between him and Josh Jacobs goes, but nothing really notable here. Um, what do you got on the uh, Raiders? Is this a team that can make some noise in this division, or are they clearly outclassed by the uh, top three dogs in the West? So this is like a... An uncharacteristic bet for me, I'd say. And I'd bet the Raiders over eight and a half wins. You did? Um, Wow. And this is actually... Really? If you dive into this, it is probably one of, if not not the biggest regression spot of the offseason. And I I bet against it. 
But so listen to this. So the Raiders trailed. Wait, my, my head is the, all in a pretzel right now. Go based ahead. on based on the what the, the regression that's coming, it should be an under bet. Now I think there's some regression baked into the line. They're at eight and a half. They won ten games last year. So Obviously, you're that's betting a, on the regression. I'm the regressing. What, I'm to, on, look, I'm <laughs> betting on the opposite of how I normally bet. Is what I'm saying, which is why. It's what is the opposite of regression? Progression. Positive regression. Anyway. <laughs> okay, go on. <laughs> This team trailed in 15 out of 17 games last year. Not good. They, they were seven and two in one score games. Not what you want. They ended the season with a minus 65 point differential. That was which, that all? Which ended in, or which resulted in 6.8 Pythagorean wins. So they outperformed that by 3.2. It's a bit. So why do I like the over here? Well, one, I love Josh McDaniels. I love that hire. He so you you mentioned he was with the Broncos. He was eleven and seventeen as their, their head coach. He didn't even make it through two full seasons, but he had a combination of Kyle Orton and Tim Tebow as his uh, quarterback. So not really given a chance there. After that, he went to the Rams for a season as their offensive coordinator and was gifted with uh, Sam Bradford as his quarterback and Brandon Lloyd as the number one wide receiver. Since then, with the Patriots now. I'm going to say these numbers, and yes, I'm fully aware Tom Brady was at the helm, so it's harder to decipher if how much of it was McDaniels and how much was just the greatness of Brady. But since then, the Patriots have averaged the highest points per game in the NFL at 29.5, the highest red zone TD percentage, and the fewest turnovers. So yes, Brady is a large part of that. But let's just look at last season with a rookie quarterback, Mac Jones, at the helm. They averaged 26.6 points per game, which was sixth in the league. Seventh in the league at converting on third down, top ten in both rush and pass success rate, and number seven in red zone scoring. So to me, there's right, the a Patriots pretty... are awesome. Talk to me about yes. the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that mean for this Raiders team? So you're getting a first of all, before I dive into that, the stuff this Raiders team overcame last year to still get 10 wins. It was can't, incredible. Can't be overlooked. The Gruden yes. situation, the rug situation, Waller being injured much of the year. There was so, so many I, times we were like, all right, this is the end for the yeah, Raiders. Exactly. Just kept so, coming. So, so despite the point differential and a couple wins that are, they, they had a ton of penalties in their favor, I think Derek Carr and this team deserve a ton of credit. So now you're getting yeah. Josh McDaniels, who I really do think is a great offensive mind coming into this offense with a veteran quarterback. Devonte Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro. So I, 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 again, I just think this is an offense with so much potential. Uh, the offensive line is the biggest question mark for me. You're going to need some younger guys to take a step forward if you, if you want to have a, uh, you know, an average to above average offensive line. But I think with McDaniel's calling plays, and you saw some of it in the Hall of Fame game, actually, which you know I obviously don't want to take too much away from, but I think you're going to get a lot of screen passes to slow pass rushes down and quick throws. That was what Brady and the Patriots were really notorious for, not taking a ton of sacks, getting rid of the ball quickly, taking the shots when they're there. So I think you're going to get a lot of that same situation here, and you have the personnel to do it with with the weapons they have. You have, gr you have three great possession receivers in Adams, Waller, and, and Renfro, and, and Adams and Waller are both deep threats as well. So I think you have great weapons on the offense with McDaniels will maximize. And then on the defensive side of the ball, you brought in Chandler Jones to pair with Max Crosby, which should be a fantastic pass yes. rush. The big, a huge concern is the secondary. I'm not going to deny Oh, that. yes. You know, they were below average last year in DVOA and success rate. Now they lose Casey Hayward. So they're projecting think, starting cornerbacks are Anthony Averett and Rock Yassin. Yes. Yeah, so, and you're going up against Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, and Justin Herbert in this division. How are they ever stopping anyone? Uh, yeah, I get that. They're going to need to win some shootout games. But when you go up and down their schedule, they, they, this isn't a team that I look at any game and I'm like, oh, they're losing this game. Yes, the Chiefs have, have kind of dominated them over the last couple of years, but I, I think this is going to be a team that's in every game. And it, it, when I see eight and a half wins, I think like it wouldn't shock me. And you could make a case for this being the worst team in the division, like their price, but it wouldn't shock me if they finished second in the division, just because I think these divisional matchups, like we're already saying we like the Raiders in week one at plus four. That's us saying, we think there's a chance they win that game. And I do think there's a chance yeah. they win that game. So in these matchups versus these other divisional teams uh, for them to be priced like two games lower than the chargers, I, I just don't think is an accurate pricing. And I think this is an a, a above 500 team. So I, I took them at the over eight and a half wins. I don't like it. Okay. I don't like it one bit. 
but you made a decent case for it. But this is just not a team that I would bet the over on. I, I, I like it. Like you said, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they came in second division. I wouldn't be surprised if they won the division. I think they're a talented team. But for me, it's just the secondary is just a really big concern. I know they have the weapons on offense to go toe to toe in a shootout with some of these teams. But even if you're in a shootout, like just relying on Derek Carr to pull out these last second wins when he's clearly the fourth best quarterback in this division by such a wide margin is just, it's just a tough ask. And then like, I know it's just the preseason. I know we shouldn't take too much from this, but like, what are you doing? Josh McDaniels, Josh Jacobs is playing in the preseason, getting the ball on like every play, he got seven touches. And then I get Zamir White's a rookie. Like you want to get him some game action, but then he gets 14 touches. Like, are they even going to have any bodies left by the time we get to the regular season? What is he doing? Yeah, but that doesn't, I, I mean, it's just, it's just like, do you have a brain? Like, it's, it's not like, it's not like I'm going to bet the under because of it, but it's just, I'm just watching. Like, what are you doing? I just look at it as this Raiders team. When you watch them on a week to week basis, it felt like they're, it felt like they were just winging it on offense. Like there wasn't an offensive system in place. It, it, it just with the disaster that went on with Gruden, it just felt like it, they were just making it up as they go on the fly. I think McDaniels is going to come in and we saw what he did with a rookie quarterback last year. He now gets, say what you want about Derek Carr. He's not a bad quarterback. He's a veteran quarterback. who's had some success in the league and took it, took this team to the playoffs last year. And, and yeah, the Broncos got better, but it still wasn't a, a, uh, easy division last year. The Chiefs were still good. The Chargers yeah. were still good. They they beat the Chargers in that f- season finale in overtime to make it to the playoffs. So by no means was this a pushover team last year. Obviously, winning ten games and and yeah, they lost Casey Hayward, but it, the the secondary wasn't wasn't great last season. I I, I agree that they have a potential to be worse and and probably maybe one of the worst in the league. But um, there there was games in there where the offense just wasn't scoring at all. I mean, 17, 17 points, or no, 15 points against Washington last year. Nine against the against Chiefs. Against Cincinnati, Cincinnati at nine. It's just so the nine against the Bears. And so, it, yeah, there was just games where this <laughs> offense fell flat. And I don't know that I see it happening as much this season uh, with, with the pieces. That, and Waller was hurt for most of last year, too. So, it, most of, as you know, Hunter Renfer is a good receiver, but to have him as your number one target for majority of the season, yeah. it's, you know, you're, you're getting a massive upgrade from that, that perspective. I don't know. This just felt like a team that just won so many games last year where you're like, how, like, how are they winning right now? What, what exactly just happened? And then they somehow win the game and like, yeah, yeah they made some upgrades on, on the, on the off season. But like, I just don't think that they're that much better from last year. I think this is more like a seven to eight win team. I'd probably bet the under if you made me bet it. I did. But with them at eight and a half and the chargers at 10, 10 and a half, it just, I, I, and that to me is the hype on the Chargers. Like, eight and a half's a lot in this division, though. It, so is 10 and a half for the Chargers. But they're a lot more talented of a team. I'm not saying I'm betting the over on the Chargers, but I, I would bet the under, but this is another thing. This is another, like, let's pump the brakes on Justin Herbert. Why, why are we just anointing Justin Herbert as this, this, he's better than Derek Carr based on one season or based on two seasons? He's how much, how much did he play in the first season? Not much. 15 games. Tyrod Taylor got his oh, lung yeah, Tyrod, stabbed yeah, right, in week right, two right, right. or whatever. Right. Oh, yeah. You're right. You got the punctured lung from the trainer. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I got you. I got you, Tyrod. <laughs> all right. Well, don't sit here and tell me that Justin Herbert isn't better than Derek Carr. I, all I'm saying is it's not, it's not a landslide. Derek Carr is the clear fourth best quarterback in this division. With – yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, I'm not going to make a case that he's better than Herbert, certainly not Wilson or Mahomes, oh, but I don't, I don't think it's as big of a gap as it's made out to be. I think their car is a little underrated. I'll give you that. Yeah. I mean, like last year, yeah. 23 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, not great. But like, look who's receiving targets were the year before. I think he played nine. better than his stats show last year. Like, if you watch the games, I was more impressed with him than when you look at the twenty-three touchdowns, the fourteen or seven. That's not very impressive. But he was yeah. mu- he was much better than that if you actually watch the games. I agree with that. Yeah. So, look, it's not my most confident bet of the off season. I just don't think this team is a sub five hundred team, and I think there's enough uh, volatility within the division where if they upset a couple games against the Broncos or Chargers, then they can find themselves at nine and eight, maybe pushing for a wild card spot. 
just a team. It's just like I don't. Know, I just don't see any like guaranteed wins on their schedule. Like, but I don't like, see guaranteed losses either. Like they're they're gonna be. No, you're right. They're gonna. They're kind of like they could be in any game. They could beat anyone. They could also lose to anyone. Like they're not a team that I trust to take care of business against a bad team. But they're also not a team that I'd ever count out. Like oh, they could never beat the Chiefs. Like of course they could. Yeah. So just interesting type of team like that. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. If I handed you a hundred dollars right now and said you had to bet on one team to win this division, who would it be? Uh, I'd still pick the Chiefs. I still think it's you're still getting plus odds one. factored in, not just uh, yeah, odds factored okay. in. Yeah, I still think there's enough there's enough meat on the bone for me to take them at uh, yeah, plus, plus one seventy. One seventy. Yeah, those. Yeah, so I think there's still enough there for me to take them. What about you? Be between Chiefs or Broncos. Okay. See either one. Might go Chiefs just because it's a good price, like you said. Like that's pretty solid plus money for the Chiefs, but I do like the plus two seventy five on the Broncos too. So either yeah. of them. All right. All right. Any player props? Anything else you want to say here? Nope. All right. I have two props to run by you. I don't know if you're gonna like the first one, given how All high right. you are on the Raiders. But All right, I already hate it. Devonte Adams under 10 and a half receiving touchdowns. This is at minus 130 on DK and MGM right now. I know you're already making a nah, face. the odds. Like I don't the minus 130. They move. People bet them. What do you yeah, want from ahead. me? It opened to minus 115. Uh, last five seasons: 11, 18, 5, 13, and 10. So obviously, been a big touchdown guy, but he's now 29 years old. As much as we can say we are impressed with Derek Carr last season, this is a big downgrade at quarterback. Back-to-back MVP seasons from Aaron Rodgers. Now Derek Carr and the whole offense is a step down from what he played with in Green Bay. The last time Derek Carr threw 30 touchdown passes, way back in 2015, like we said a minute ago, he only had 23 last season. Meanwhile, Aaron Rodgers threw 37 and 48 touchdown passes the last two years. So I think it's safe to project a high target volume for Devontae Adams in this offense, expecting him to catch 30% or higher of the total touchdowns thrown, especially when you still have Waller and Renfro in the mix. Like that's just a big ass. So I think this is more of just like how many touchdowns can we realistically project Derek Carr to throw? And then from that, how many are we giving to Devontae Adams? Because this number is basically saying that he's getting a ridiculously high percentage. And again, with the injury factor, if he misses time, you pretty much win. So I went under. I don't like the odds. You don't like I could give you any number. And if it's minus 130, you're like, I don't like it. Yeah, I, you, you're you're taking an under on Devonte Adams ten and a half touchdowns at minus one thirty. I, I I don't hate the bet. I don't hate the bet. It's just laying minus one thirty odds. I feel like isn't there's an under there. nine and a half at like minus one hundred five plus one hundred. If you yeah, if you'd prefer to go that direction, I want to see. Uh, like, when's the last time Derek Carr had a receiver of this caliber? Is about my thing. You know, it's fair. Let me, Maybe When's it's why he doesn't throw so many touchdown passes. So, okay. So in the year that he threw for 30 touchdowns, Michael Crabtree had nine touchdowns in 16 games. So so he had under 10 and a half is what you're saying. He, he did, but I would say Devonta Adams is slightly better than, than slightly. Michael Crabtree. So he did have Amari Cooper for a few years in his younger days. He was never a huge touch. So Cooper. I'm just saying he had a really good receiver on his team. Not, not necessarily yeah. a big touchdown guy, but like he did have an elite wide receiver early in his career and he he was at like mid 20s touchdowns most year so cooper was there i think this was his rookie year when caught through 30 so crabtree had nine and cooper had six it's a pretty good receiving core yeah just you know and, and michael crabtree was 28 years old at the time so it wasn't a a spry young michael crabtree it's not a spry young Devonte adams yeah but i'll take a 29 year old Devonte adams over a 28 year old michael crabtree okay it's one of those bets that I don't hate it. I just don't like minus 130 for it. Can I interest you in another They also prop? already have chemistry, too. Don't forget that. They played in college together. So That it's not is really... the dumbest. I'm the dumbest. I, knew, I knew that was going to set I hear off. so I many people that. say that. It's like, oh, my God, he caught a pass from him seven years ago in college. <laughs> like, There's so much chemistry there. As if anyone on earth remembers anything they did seven years ago and how it could impact them right now, like from a sense of catching a football. It's the dumbest argument. I know you're not making this. It's just like the amount of times I've heard that this offseason. Like, oh, there's chemistry there like he's caught 5,000 passes from Aaron Rodgers between that last pass and this next one like you think he remembers anything about Derek Carr throwing a football 
My God. Same with Holly, Hollywood Brown and Kyler. You hear it there, too. What, they played together when they were six years old or something? Like, <laughs> no, in Oklahoma. Chemistry from Pee Wee football. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were the dynamic one-two punch that won yeah. the Pee Wee title. <laughs> All right. Speaking of minus 130 odds, I have one more prop to run by you priced at minus 130. Okay. Are you a pass already? You get dislayed on me. <laughs> I think I already texted this one to you, so I don't know what your feelings are. But Joey Bosa under 12.75 oh, sacks. Yeah, Minus 130 on DraftKings. He is entering his seventh NFL season. Would you like to guess what his career high sack total is? 12. 12 and a half, which is under 12.75. So right off the top, we are looking at a seven. What are you counting? I was doing the math. 12 under 12.75, making sure that adds up. I was kidding. Go ahead. (laughs) You're really throwing me off here. Okay, so right off the top, we have a seven-year veteran that you were betting on to have the best year of his entire career if you're betting the over. His last his, his, his career high 12 and a half sack totals way back in 2017. The last four years, 10 and a half, 7 and a half, 11 and a half, and 5 and a half. Two of those seasons were cut short due to injury, but his last two full seasons, 10 and a half and 11 and a half sacks. The Chargers did make some upgrades on the D-line, getting Khalil Mack. You could kind of make a case that at that helps Bosa, or you can make a case that Mac's going to steal some of those sacks. So it actually hurts his case. I can kind of see it going either way, but I think in the end you're betting, all, you're betting a line that's at this guy's absolute ceiling. And this is a player that's missed 21 games in his six year career so far. So if he misses a few games, you win the bet. If he plays all 17, I still think you have a really good shot. This line, I get it's price at minus minus one thirty, but this one should be 10 and a half minus half minus one ten both sides. I think this line's crazy. Yeah, I don't hate it. I always think that the upgrades on the D line always help uh, of the pass rushers. I don't look at it as like a, a wide receiver coming in and taking away targets. It's more, it, I think it opens things up more than. But again, you're betting on a guy to have this career high in sack, so I definitely do like the under regardless. Yeah, I mean, just think of any player that's been in the NFL for six years. If you set his line at like minus one thirty to go under for him to have a career record in any sort of stat, like it's just. What's a uh, so career career highs? What is uh Derek Carr's touchdown passes at? Because the most he's thrown is thirty touchdowns, right? So I gotta imagine they probably either thirty two one year. Carr was thirty two. I want to say his were like high twenties. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, okay, twenty nine and a half. Yeah. Okay. It's All right. So they didn't get to too carried. They didn't get too carried away with it. Yeah, it's a little harder with quarterbacks just because there's not as many injuries. Yeah, for sure. They're not they're not mobile quarterbacks. But yeah, I'd go under there if you made me bet it. Um, and the other prop we both have in this division to actually Jerry Judy. Do you still like that one? Over? Yeah. Yeah. So when the um Tim Patrick news came out. Yeah, I actually bet him and I bet Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy both over receiving yards. Actually, bet them. No, I think I bet Sutton over touchdowns and both of them over yards. They were at like 900 and then five and a half touchdowns. So I do like that a lot. I kind of like, I like Sutton as the touchdown and maybe more yards kind of guy where I think Judy could kind of slide in as the possession kind of receiver. Yeah, I can't figure out how the breakdown's going to yeah. be. Like, it's just tough to know. Like, Wilson could just have like fall in love with one of them. And then like, you know, one of them has a breakout season. The other one's kind of forgotten or they could be kind of split up and both put up numbers. Cause we saw that with Metcalf and Locke, like they both had really good seasons. It's just tough to know without seeing it. So I, I just kind of threw a little bit on each thinking worst case, one will hit one loses best case. Maybe they both get volume. So. Yeah. I have them both written down in my prop spots for week one. I just don't know how I want to attack it yet. Yeah. I mean, it might just be like, if there's a big discrepancy, just play who's ever lower over. Like the sun's at like yeah. 65 and a half yards, Judy's at 55 and a half. Just take Judy over. And definitely play them. I'll be playing uh probably them at touchdown props if they're both plus money in week one. Oh, right. At Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. That should be fun. Yep. All right. Anything left to say? Nope. All right. The big question that everyone's waiting to hear the answer to. AFC South or AFC North? Where are we going to next? 
I think we got to go south because who knows? Is this the Sean Watson situation going to be wrapped up? There's still the unknowns with that. So I feel like we have to push that division to last. It was funny. I was listening to our podcast from last week after it came out. Yeah, was yeah. After the Watson news was announced, and I was like, oh, we sound like idiots saying this will never get resolved. And then it was resolved. And then all of a sudden, it's not resolved yeah, again. So now we look exactly. like idiots. So, so yeah, I think we got to push that back uh, till the end. All right, so we're taking the bus. We're heading down south, taking on the AFC South next week, our second-to-last division preview. Be back right here to break it down. Until then, check us out on Twitter, at BetRightPod. Check us out on YouTube, at BetRightPod. Smash the like button on YouTube. Leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts from Jeff and Rue. We are the BetRight Sports Betting Podcast because every time you bet with us, you bet right.